Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy here for your daily dose of the RARS as we talk about the oh so stupid crap going on in the world of technology. Do you remember I come and do these videos in order to support SiliconDojo.com, free hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, we have a class coming up on uh, AI computer vision using something called the Moon Dream model next week. We have a class coming up on pushing AI to the edge with Raspberry Pis in a few weeks. If you're interested, take a look at our schedule at SiliconDojo.com. If you want to support free to your education, there's a donor box link down below. And uh, with that, surprise, surprise. Yeah, nobody's surprised. Nobody's surprised. Oh my golly, water is wet. Did you know water is wet? And Nvidia is trying to physically track their GPUs? Shocking. Anyways, I think this is kind of an interesting story because it's a weird, it's like a. It's an interesting story, but it's also kind of a weird story at the exact same time. Anyways, let's get into it. Coming from CNBC, NVIDIA's new software could help trace where its AI chips end up. Basically, so uh, so when NVIDIA sells their product, it's a whole package. Not There's not just the hardware there, but there's also software that goes along with it. And so their new software that they are deploying out there can supposedly physically track uh, where the GPUs are located. This is a big thing that's been coming up, right? Again, with, with the American Congress, they're all worried about China man getting artificial intelligence. And so one of the things they want to know is they want to know where any of our AI chips are. I mean, af after you spend millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars buying the chips, we still consider them ours which is more than a little bit of a problem, right? So there's been this whole thing about basically how to uh, location, uh, geolocate uh, these chips to prove that they're, they're not going to the wrong locations. There are so many, there's so many problems with this. There's just so many problems with this mentality. Just, I mean, who, who wants to be broadcasting to the United States government where all of their data centers are physically located? Think about, think about if you're a government for another, uh, you know, a government of another country. Do you want the U.S. government to know literally where all of your AI data centers are so they know where to drop the bombs when you do something that makes us cry a little bit, right? There's a lot of that big problem out there. And so it's kind of interesting to see this as NVIDIA tries to walk the line uh, between delivering a decent product and basically having to kowtow uh, to the complete idiots that we have uh, in office. Uh, so NVIDIA is developing software that could provide location verification for its AI graphics uh, processing units, a move that comes as Washington ramps up efforts to prevent restricted chips from being used in countries like China. The opt-in service uses a client software agent that NVIDIA chip customers can install to monitor the health of their AI GPUs the company said in a blog post Wednesday. And so this is one of those things where it is either a nothing burger or it's the slippery slope to, to hell. It's one of the others. So you do have to understand with this. So apparently at this point in time, it's an opt-in service. So you have to opt in to the geolocation and you actually have to install the agent onto the servers so that so the agent can actually send uh, information up to NVIDIA. So all of this is actually... Uh, I don't know, relatively normal, I guess. Uh, be something like SNMP for uh, Simple Network Management Protocol for 2025. So what Simple Net Network Management Protocol used to be, it's a pretty cool system uh, for tracking things like the physical health of your server. So if you have a rack of, if you have a rack of 50 servers, how are you going to manage that hardware? You can use SNMP. So there's SNMP, there's something called traps, management consoles, anywhere ways, basically information such as CPU utilization, RAM utilization, hard drive errors, a whole bunch of other stuff can be collected uh, by these SNMP, what are called traps. Uh, well, there's agents, there's agents on the system. The configurations are then called traps. The, inf the information is then sent to the management server. Anyways, you don't care about any of this. Uh, <clears throat> but the important thing there uh, is it can be very useful. And so here, again, with everything being fucking cloud-based anymore, I hate that it's all cloud-based, but it is. It's reality. So basically, if you had some kind of agent basically sitting on the server, collecting information about the GPU and all that kind of stuff, and sending that basically up to NVIDIA, and then you having a dashboard, you have a single pane of glass, so that you can see their performance of all of your GPUs, um, that... Frankly, that, that makes complete sense right there. 
Again, I have some arguments about the architecture of that system, but otherwise, fuck it, it's 2025, this stuff, this stuff works. Uh, this is how this stuff works. And I think it's important too, again, we talk about things, I, mean, I talk about this a lot where um, AI is not a mature stack. So we talk about mature stacks, immature stack. LAMP is a mature stack. It's a geezerly stack. Uh, artificial intelligence is not a mature stack. So one of the big problems right now, a lot of companies are probably dealing with, is once you start deploying artificial intelligence at scale, you might not necessarily understand where the bottlenecks are, right? Where, where are the bottlenecks? Where are you running into problems? Is it the GPU? Is it the RAM? Is it the hard drive? Is it other things going on? And so being able to monitor, right? A lot of these, uh, these GPU clusters are fucking huge. So being able to monitor all of the, these systems and understand what's going on, Again, makes makes complete sense. Uh, NVIDIA also said that customers, quote, will be able to visualize their GPU fleet utilization using a dashboard globally or by compute zones, groups of nodes uh, enrolled in the same physical or cloud locations. And so this is kind of like understanding where your locations are. So when you design systems, many times you design uh, clusters or some, some variation of a cluster. Basically what a cluster is, is when you tie numerous physical computers essentially in to be a logical computer. The idea is an entire computer can fail and the rest of the cluster uh, maintains activity or you can do things like load balancing, right? So basically you, ju you just send to, uh, your communication to the cluster. The cluster knows how to route uh, your traffic to whatever server uh, has the least utilization going on. Uh, so you can have that in, in premises. You could have that in the building, like maybe each floor in your building has its own little AI cluster uh, so that you understand what's going on there. There's something called a GeoDNS uh, for DNS routing. So if you, have, if you have servers all around the world, like what DNS is, so you go to CNN.com, uh, you query DNS, it gives you back an IP address. That's the actual server IP address you're going to. One of the interesting things with GeoDNS is GeoDNS Geo will literally return a different IP address based off of where it thinks you are in the world, right? If you're in Africa, it'll give you an IP address for the data center in Africa. If you're in the United States, it'll give you the data center, uh, for the IP address for the data center in Colorado or whatever else, right? And so you can have GeoDNS. And so with this system, if you, if you can install these agents, onto your NVIDIA servers. You put those NVIDIA servers into a cluster and in one, some way, shape or form, you then designate uh, the location, the geolocation of that cluster. Again, all, all of this is, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense, right? If, if our politicians hadn't lost their fucking minds a while ago, there would not be very much of a concern right now. Um, Let's see. However, NVIDIA told CNBC in a statement that the latest software does not give the company or outside actors the ability to disable its chips. There is no kill switch, it added. For GPU health, there are no features that allow NVIDIA to remotely control or take action on registered systems. It is read-only telemetry sent to NVIDIA. So NVIDIA wants everybody to know <laughs> there's no, there is definitely not a kill switch. Yeah, I mean, that'd be like putting a kill switch on an Israeli tank. I mean, can you imagine how stupid you'd have to be <laughs> to have like a state-of-the-art Israeli tank and put a kill switch on it? Like, nobody would be that fucking dumb. <laughs> it's definitely not a kill switch in NVIDIA. I swear, I swear. Reading those articles about that whole Hamas intelligence operation thing and finding out, like, if it, it does Israel actually put kill switches on their tanks? That's insane. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. The, the, the moment you find out that Israel put basically vulnerable kill switches on their own tanks, it really brings up the question, where isn't there a kill switch? Anyways, a screenshot of the software posted on NVIDIA's blog showed details such as the machine's IP address and location. Yeah, that all makes sense. Um, a senior research fellow, a fellow at the Department of War Studies, King's College London, said that while NVIDIA indicated that GPUs do not have hardware tracking technology, the blog did not specify if the data, quote, uses customer input, network data, cloud provider metadata, or other methods. So I think this is an important thing to be thinking about, you know, as an IT decision maker in the modern world, is, is making sure you say everything, right? I talk about this, distrust, verify, stay suspicious. 
Everybody is going to be suspicious of everything at this point in time. If, if you do not spell out how your system functions, people will assume how your system functions. And basically users, users who think AI is magic are all of a sudden going to assume how your system operates. So one of the things I would say here, again, think about your documentation or whatever else, when you're talking to anybody, fully explain to them and educate them how your system actually works. A quote, in principle, also, the sent data contains metadata like network address, which may enable location in practice. Absolutely. Uh, the software could also detect any unexpected uh, usage patterns that differ from what was declared, he added. That might also be an interesting thing. Think about this. If you're running your AI cluster and if... Oh, if NVIDIA basically has an idea of what your AI cluster does, and then all of a sudden it starts seeing spikes in utilization, the whole question of how valuable is metadata, right? Think about this, right? If even for Ally, even for allies in the United States, right? If you have a cluster of NVIDIA servers, and let's say they're not even processing military stuff. They're not, part, not, not processing bombing runs or any of that. They're processing something else for the military. If all of a sudden your government decides to start gearing up your military, ergo, you're going to start having more load on all of your AI systems. Your AI systems is not just going to be for, for bomb calculations or artillery calculations. It's also going to be for things like asking, you know, what, what paid time off looks like. Right? You're going to get those kind of queries too. So imagine if you're, if you're uh, running any kind of AI operations anywhere within your government, right? All of a sudden something happens. You don't want people to know about it. But again, people start using your systems more and more. Will that information be, tr be transmitted back to the United States? Uh, quote, firms affected by U.S. export controls or China-related restrictions could use a system to verify and prove their GPU fleet fleets remain in approved locations and state and demonstrate compliant usage to regulators. And so think about this. Again, think, of, think about how morally devoid our politicians currently are in the United States. The, the idea that this, this system could be used for GPU tracking. And that's the other thing to be thinking about in the technology world too. Like a lot of, a lot of times companies literally don't have a solution for what the, 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 the politicians want. The politicians are like, we want this. And the nice part with the, with the, the companies is they just can't do it. <laughs> It just, by, by hook or by crook. It just can't be done. It just can't be done. Or even if it can be done, there's like so much investment that goes into it. Basically, they can, they can tell the politicians to shove off because it's infeasible. I think one of the interesting things going down this path is you start making it feasible. And that's one of my concerns with Jensen Wong, right? Jensen Wong, right? He, he, is, he is desperate to grovel over Trump. When you, when you see Jensen Wong just slobbering on the ground, right, whenever it comes to Trump, it is, it's a sight to behold. It's a sight to behold. So one of the curious things here is, again, and that's something to think about with, with architecture design. If you look at Tim Cook, however you feel about Apple, Tim Cook and Apple have tried to design things, their systems, in such a way that they are, are theoretically, un, they are crackable, but they're un, as uncrackable as possible, right? We engineered the system in this way so that we cannot easily add back doors. We cannot easily allow uh, law enforcement to open up phones, all of that type of stuff, right? That, that's an engineering design choice. The curious thing, right, with Jensen Wong, with Jensen Wong so fucking desperate to grow and thrown a Trump, right? What if he makes the what if he makes the opposite decision? We we are going to start designing the systems to be as trackable by Uncle Sam as possible. And what does that start looking? Again, we roll out an agent. We roll out an agent now, and we see how comfortable people are with that agent. Then we start adding a little bit of functionality. Then we and at some at it, then at some point. It just, it's, just, it's just part of the package. If you want to use NVIDIA, you just have to use this geolocation system that we've been building up over the past five or six years or whatever else. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that could uh, actually help in compliance and indirectly on investment outlook positively. It is interesting. It could help with compliance with investment outlook. 
Uh, I don't know. Pressure on NVIDIA has intensified after Justice Department investigations into alleged smuggling rings that moved over 160 million in NVIDIA chips to China. Yes. I talked about that that before. A lot of people said, oh, that's a nothing burger. Why, why did you even talk about an article of China smuggling $160 million in NVIDIA chips that literally happened in May that they're now talking about now? And the, re the reason is, is because that is going to be yet another cudgel to try to beat NVIDIA over the head with, no matter how ridiculous it is. So anyways, I think this, this is one of those things that is currently a nothing burger, but it's, it's a slippery slope nothing burger um, that could go to very bad, bad places. So what do you think about this? What do you think about NVIDIA uh, creating new software to potentially allow uh, folks to be able to geographically track uh, their, their GPUs? Right, basically this is just an agent that goes on the servers, tracks a bunch of whole hardware information, and then you get a single pane of glass to see what the hell's going on. What do you think about this being the first step in much more complicated things going into the future? Again, we talk about GPSs. Like you think about uh, adding a GPS to an NVIDIA GPU and you think, oh, that's ridiculous. It would cost too much money. Remember, these GPUs are $40,000 a pop. This GPS is 30, <laughs> it's 30. And this is me buying it from Amazon. <laughs> cost me 30. Sure, it costs less for Jensen Wong, right? So again, the, th the, the thought of actual, them actually getting the point of attaching physical GPS units to these NVIDIA servers, is that, is that such a stretch in 2025? Going in, going into 2026. I don't know. Put your thoughts down below. Do remember I do these videos in order to fund the silicon at dojo.com. Free to the end user technology education, a hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina, coming to Asheville hopefully soon. We have a class coming up on uh, AI computer vision using something called the Moon Dream model. That's coming up next week. We have another class coming up on pushing AI to the edge using Raspberry Pis in another few weeks. If you're interested, take a look at our schedule at silicondojo.com. If you want to help support free to end user education, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.